What's up guys, welcome to another tutorial. Today I will be showing you guys how I do my sky replacements. So we will be creating this image right here and basically we create that from this which is the, the uh, sky image and this which is the foreground image. So I'll show you guys how to do that. It's actually relatively simple. The first step you're gonna wanna do is open your background photo in Photoshop. You're gonna wanna first color grade your photos. I use Lightroom to do that. I'll be releasing a Lightroom tutorial soon and um, you will be able to see how I edit in Lightroom. But for now, I already have these photos edited and color graded. Um, so we bring it into Photoshop and then we're gonna wanna grab the other image and bring that in too. Um, you're gonna have, wanna scale this to, to fit with your other image. Um, I'm just gonna set both of them to 100%, both the height and width so it fits in the image size. Um, and then you're gonna wanna click this lock button to unlock the layer and bring it into the foreground. So the first method I'm gonna show you guys how to do this with is um, using color selection. So essentially what you do is you can select just a certain color. So if you notice here, this is sort of the white spot is the area in which I'm selecting, right? Um, so if I bring this slider down, it'll select much more selectively, like it'll just select this white color right here. Another thing is if you hold down shift while you're selecting, um, you can actually select multiple different colors and add them to your range. So, um, yeah, I think, there we go. I selected the background. You'll notice there's some white area um, in the front, but I'll be able to fix that. So um, I might want to bring my fuzziness. I'll probably put that about 42. And actually, I need to select one more little color over here. Um, press OK. Um, but then what you're going to want to do is you have this selected. So there's two ways you can go about doing this. You could either create it via a new layer and then just uh, delete or hide the other one. Um, or you can go over here and select add layer mask. However, what that did was that actually only brought out the, uh, the foreground. So you're going to want to invert that. If you go over here, um, double click on it, you go over here and click invert. Now the sky is gone and the foreground remains. But we still do have a few issues here. So for example, if I were to um, turn off the visibility for the background layer, you'll notice there's like a glitch right here where you can see through it. And that's just because of the way I use the color selection tool. So you gotta um, select the layer mask and then you're gonna wanna paint with white over this area and it should fix everything up. I'm gonna actually have to fix up this right here too, just paint over that. And what that does is that just makes that area visible. Um, so all the, all the spots where it's glitchy, any place where there's white, I bring it all back. And then you're gonna wanna uh, position the background layer to just make it, you know, better. And the colors, the colors match in this specific photo. Um, and then actually, um, one thing I'm considering doing is just moving everything down a little bit, just to adjust it so I can get more sky in there. Um, however, there is another way to go about doing this. So if I delete this layer mask, um, you can see we're back to the, the previous, what we previously had, which is an image with the sky. So there's another way you can do it. Um, one tool that you can use is the pen tool. So essentially what you do is you just select a bunch of points. Um, obviously you'd want to select a lot more points than this since this isn't very accurate. Um, you connect them all together, click, right click, make selection. Um, uh, and then you're going to want to create a mask from that. And then of course you're going to have to invert it again. And so that's how you would go about using the pen tool. And that's what you have to do when you have really complicated shapes that are hard to define. Um, but generally, if you can avoid using the pen tool, you should, because um, you just basically have to click a bunch of points and it's annoying. So the last tool I'm gonna to show you guys how to use is the quick selection tool. I'm sure a lot of you guys probably actually know this already. Um, all you have to do is just hold down your mouse and it selects it for you. So um, the reason why I keep using these layer masks layer mask is because if I were to press the delete key to delete this, yes, I would get the same result. However, there's no way to recover that in case I wanted to edit it. So if I undo, um, go back to the layer mask and of course invert again, um, that way I have, I have the original image saved here, but the layer mask decides how much of that is actually visible. So for example, if I go to the layer map, and I'm wanting, you know, just a bit of the sky back for some reason, for some odd reason. Um, and I'm painting in white, by the way, right here over this black area right there. I could bring the sky back just by painting it. Or for example, like right, 
right around here is kind of like a little strange thing. So um, if I right click here and disable the layer mask, that is how it looks in the original image. However, that's not actually how I want it to look. So uh, I'm just gonna go over here, show you guys uh, I'm making use of the pen tool. Just gonna get rid of this spot, this little thing right here. Uh, right click needs collection. So in this in this situation, I'm using a combination of both. Um, I think I'm gonna want, yes, the black tool. And there we go. Now it looks a little bit more uniform. Um, I'm gonna continue to bring everything down a little bit just because there's a lot of extra space down here. And then that's kind of how the the final composition turns out. It's relatively simple. There's a few ways to do it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will be releasing a Lightroom tutorial soon. Not too soon. Um, my presets are actually available. My Lightroom presets are actually available for purchase. I'll put a link in the description if you guys are interested in that. Um, but anyways, that's how I composite skies, uh, replace skies. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.